friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're doing well. Welcome back to another video and welcome back to another book haul. It has been a hot minute since I have sat down and filmed anything. I apologize for my absence. Uh, there will be a video coming very, relatively soon kind of talking about my mental health and you know things that are changing and um, just things to expect for the future. But before we get to all that, let's talk about some books because it's been a long time since I've done that and I really genuinely miss it. Um, I have a lot of special editions uh, specifically to talk about, but a ton of books that I was um, either sent through uh, subscription boxes or I purchased on my own, as well as some books that I purchased for myself, just a few of them, and then one book that I was sent specifically so that I can do an early review, or not an early review, do a review of the book for them. And then I have some unboxings to do as well. I will be doing two Owlcrate Jr. and two Owlcrate boxes. I am up for Owlcrate, so if you are interested in getting a discount on your first box, I will leave my discount code in the description box below. It is a 15% off discount code. I had a 10% code before and they just recently let me know that my code has been bumped up to 15. So if you want to get 15% off of your first box that does not include special editions, um, just like regular one-time special edition boxes, then you can check out that code below. That being said, I have a lot of books to talk about, so without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to start off with special editions of the books that I've already unboxed on my own and looked at and worshipped and loved, and then we'll get into the book I bought myself, and then the one that I was sent, and then we'll go into the Alcrate unboxings. So the first one that I have here is my Illumicrate special edition of The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This is absolutely stunning. I adore the new cover, not the cover, but the color of the cover and the sprayed edges. Um, this is signed, I believe, yes. This is signed by the author, and it just has really gorgeous um, foil ink on the front. I love it. It's stunning. I love the uh, gray hardback underneath as well. Um, this is a book that I really enjoyed, hence buying a second edition, a special edition at least. Um, and this is a fake dating story about uh, people that work in STEM, which I really enjoyed. Um, I just had a lot of fun with this book, these characters, the chemistry that the characters had on the page. I just really, really enjoyed it. I had a fun time with it. I read it so fast. I gave it a five out of five stars. So when I saw the special edition come up, there was no way I could pass it up. And this is one that I'm super glad that I have in my collection. Next, we're going to talk about three special editions of the same book. Um, one of them I purchased myself. The other two I got in book boxes. So um, it just kind of worked out that way. I'm going to talk about the ones that are two ones that are very, very similar, um, and that is Gallant by V.E. Schwab. Uh, I got the, I believe this is the Fairy Loot or Illumicrate version. I can't remember, honestly. Um, it does not say. Super helpful. Love that for me. Um, <laughs> I don't know which one this one is, but this one did come in a special edition box. Oh, it's Illumicrate. Um, and this one looks very similar to the a Waterstone exclusive edition. The stencil edges are basically the same. This one just has a red background and this one has a white background with the colored stencil. Um, but the covers are also quite similar. I don't know which one I'm going to keep at the end. This is what the backs look like. And then as for underneath, uh, this one has some cool, um, what's it called? End pages. And then that's what the embossing looks like. I'm rusty at this if you cannot tell. And then we have this one, which is the Waterstone Exclusive Edition. This one also has really, really cool um, end papers. And then it also has that same design uh, on the front of the hardcover. So uh, yes, this one is also signed by the author. However, this one is not. I don't know why Illumicrate chose not to do a signing of their special edition, but this one is not signed. This one, however, is signed. And then um, my Owlcrate special edition is also signed. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, there's a signed book plate in this one, but this one is the one that looks the most different out of the two, out of the three that I received at least. Um, this one has black sprayed edges. Obviously, the cover is black. This is also the US edition, whereas the other two are the UK editions. So this one's a little bit more square and uh, weirdly shaped. Um, I like it though. I really like the black. It definitely has a different feel than the other two books. And I just, I love the cover on this one. The black and gold just does something to me. I love the black sprayed edges. Um, the end papers on this one, again, are really, really nice. Um, I think they're really cool. And then this one actually has a little bit different on underneath the dust jacket. It says, uh, there must always be a prior at the gate. And that is what it looks like. So I really enjoy this Alcrate Special Edition. I think it's so well done. And comparatively to the other ones, it's my favorite. I didn't really talk about what this is about, but I feel like everyone is ranting and raving about this one. Um, Gallant follows a girl, I don't know her name, Olivia, who doesn't really have any family. She's invited via a letter to go back to her family home, the Gallant house. However, when she gets there, she realizes that, that nobody sent the letter. Everyone there is dead. And the only rule to living is that in this house is not to go to the other side. I don't really know if I'm getting that right, but I've heard good things. I've heard mixed things. Some people have loved it. Some people have hated it, but I'm really curious to see where I land. Next up, we have my fairy loot edition of Daughter of the Moon Goddess by 
um, Sulin Tan. This is one that I was super excited to get in my hands because it, is, because it is absolutely gorgeous. I swear I can talk. I'm just really struggling today. Um, these spray edges are absolutely to die for. I love them. The actual book itself is also absolutely beautifully stunning. Um, and then of course we have gorgeous end papers that are different on both sides, might I add. Um, Fairy Loot always does well with the really intense details on their books. And then of course we have some gorgeous embossing on the front as well. I don't really know too much about this one I know that it's set in um a, in and around mythology um I believe it's like the moon goddess legend is being retold in this story again I've heard mixed things some people have loved it some people have hated it um I'm curious to see where I stand on this one this is not a story that I would normally be gravi gravitated towards however the cover is just something that I could not say no to so I'm excited to give it a try I've heard good things so hopefully I enjoy it okay this is another book that I had absolutely zero interest in before I got it in a book box and I'm not really quite sure if this is going to be a book that is for me but I'm definitely willing to give it a try and that is um A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross this is an Illumicrate special edition again gorgeous stenciled edges sprayed edges on the bottom and top the cover is absolutely stunning as well I believe this is an exclusive cover um if not maybe the UK edition I'm not really sure but again really gorgeous that um and papers on this I don't know if they're different on both sides but they are absolutely gorgeous no they're the same um but we also do have some really stunning embossing on the um hardcover of this it's just absolutely gorgeous again another one that I don't know too much about but the back says your presence is required at once for urgent business please return to cadence with your harp upon receipt so I'm definitely interested to give it a go it definitely sounds like a interesting different type of magical realistic story so I'm interested in it I'm gonna give it a try don't know if I'm gonna love it though I also forgot to mention that the Owl Crate special edition of Gallant came with two art prints which are very cool up next I got my first box from Bellbox which is a romance only subscription box where they do special edition hardcovers of romance books so I was very excited to get these two and I was like blown away by the covers and the sprayed edges which is something I was not expecting but the first one that we have here is Indigo Bridge the Edens this is by Davini Perry um this is one that I had never heard anything about I have never even heard of this author but these stenciled sprayed edges situation is absolutely stunning I'm obsessed with this and I absolutely love the cover I believe this one is a romantic suspense um set in a small town I don't know too much about it I am definitely willing to give it a go. Obviously, I love the hardcover, um, so I'm very excited to give this one a try. Uh, my friend Karina also has this one on her TBR and recently like, wanted to pick it up, so it was like perfect timing when I got this book, but I'm very, very excited to read it. And the second book that I got in that box is The Revenge Pack. This is by uh, Isla Madden Mills. I have read a book by this author in the past. I don't actually remember anything about it, but I did read a book by her. Um, and this one is a um, sports romance. The tagline on here says, River Tate is a god on campus. Anastasia Bailey is a nobody. The craving never ends. So I'm interested to give this one a go. And again, the edges on this are absolutely stunning. This like literally blew my mind when I got this box. I was blown away by the amount of detail that went into these amazing romance books and I'm glad to see like book boxes are spending extra care and love on making romances cool. Then we have a few more Owl Crate special editions, the first one being Only a Monster by uh, Vanessa Lynn. This is one that I got in a previous book box from another company so I will definitely have to read it and see if this is something that I'm willing to keep two copies of but I do like the black spread edges, it's very nice. Um, this one is also signed by the author. We have some pretty cool embossing there and then of course we have some art underneath the dust jacket some character art so that's pretty cool this one is a story about a girl that um is living with her family for i believe the summer and she ends up like getting a job and dating this cute guy but a twist of fate and i believe some time travel situation happens and she finds out that her family is not just eccentric they are monsters and she is possibly the worst monster of them all and the guy that she's dating is actually a monster hunter so uh, i'm excited to give this one a go Karina recently read it and didn't absolutely fall in love with it, so I'm definitely keeping my expectations low, but I am excited to give it a try. Then I got an Owl Crate special edition that I was super excited to have in my hands because I absolutely love the cover, but the spread edges on this book make me want to scream. I don't know why they made this choice, but I don't agree with it. Anyways, it is uh, Blood Scion. This is by Deborah Filet. I'm sorry if I butchered that, but oh god, they hurt my eyes. It's just too bright. Um, I, I appreciate the sprayed edges because you guys know I'm always saying with Owl Crate, like, please do spray edges. We love spray edges, but this was just not the color for me. <laughs> I don't, I don't love it. Um, it is, of course, signed by the author and it has a really pretty blue underneath the dust jacket. Very gorgeous. Another one that I don't know too much about. I saw the cover and I knew that it was uh, written by a black author and I was like, I 
I need it. I need it. Uh, it's gorgeous. So I didn't even look at the synopsis. I'm like, I'm going to read that. But here it says, I am a descendant of Shango, the god of heat and fire. I am living, I am a living inferno. I am a dead girl walking. I'm not going to read more than that. Definitely sounds like it's going to be a fun time and I love supporting more black authors. Okay, this is my last little set section of subscription box books and then we'll get into the ones I bought myself. But the next one that I have is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. This is by X. Axio. Uh, this is a Fairy Loot exclusive edition. Gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Again, another one that I, I've heard a lot about in unison with um, Daughter of the Moon Goddess because they both were Asian inspired as well as had gorgeous covers. So this is one that I was, again, very excited to get. I absolutely adore those sprayed and scented edges. Again, Fairy Loot is always killing it. We have some absolutely gorgeous and papers on this one as well. I believe they are different on both sides. Yes, they are. And then it does have some embossing on the um, underside of the dust jacket as well. So. Another absolutely killer special edition from Fairy Loot. Another one that I don't know too much about. Um, again, this is not a book that I was necessarily gravitated towards, but I did love the covers. So I had my eye on it, but it wasn't one that I was necessarily like convinced that I absolutely needed to read. This says, Deadly Storms and Ancient Curse and Will her sacrifice will her sacrifice save them all? Uh, can you tell it's been a while for me? <laughs> Again, another one that I'm excited to give it a try. I don't know if I'm gonna love it, but I'm very excited for it. Okay, next up is a set of books that I was absolutely so looking forward to. So happy that I got my hands on them. I am legitimately obsessed with these books. So bear with me while I just gush about these for the next five minutes or so. But uh, that is the Bargainer books by Laura Galassa. The first one being The Bargainer, uh, no, Rhapsodic. Damn, I forgot what their names are. Uh, A Strange Hymn and Dark Harmony. I have read books one and two, but I have not read books, book three yet, as well as the special, the, um, what's it called? Short story that's in between books two and three. But, uh, this is Rhapsodic. It's absolutely stunning. And there's so many things to talk about in these books. So I'll try to go by them, like, through them fast if you haven't already seen them I would like to show it to you but you, if you have I don't want to take too much time but these are absolutely stunning the sides of them says uh bargain or I would like to make a deal which I absolutely love as well as the number of the book as well as the moon signs which I the, the phases of the moon which I really enjoy it's a really cool touch that they added they all have exclusive stenciled edges which are absolutely stunning they also have exclusive end papers as well as really gorgeous underneath the dust jacket art um, on the hardcover as well as reversible dust jackets as well. So you can choose which dust jacket you enjoy the most. I absolutely love the undercover, but something about the bargainer, I would like to make a deal situation on these black editions. I just can't, I can't say no to them. So I have not flipped them around yet, but eventually I'm, I'm sure at some point I will. Absolutely stunning. I'll go through, through the next three rather quickly. You have Strange Him. It's much thicker than the original book because the special um, short story is also in this one, but that is the stencil pages on that. Oh, I also forgot they do have quotes on the back of all of them. This is the end papers on that one. The embossing and the reversible dust jacket on that one. I'm obsessed with these. Honestly, this is one of those purchases that I got and I'm like, I am glad I spent $150 on that. This one has the moon phases on it. That is what the cover looks like. Absolutely stunning. And pages on that one. And then that is what this one looks like. I'm obsessed. It was totally worth it. And I'm so glad that I own them. And they are all signed. If you don't know what that series is about, it follows a siren named Calypso who uh, calls on the bargainer, a man known for making deals, but when he comes to collect payment on those deals, you never want to do it. It's definitely a steep price. However, uh, after her first bargain with the bargainer, she ends up creating a relationship with him and ends up with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of beads. And um, she doesn't really know why he's never come to collect. Then he disappears for several years and comes back uh, ready to collect payment. And the first pay payment comes with a kiss. And from there, things kind of grow out of hand. It's a fun series. I like it a lot. I, I compare it a lot to Sarah J Mass. I think it's a fun series. So if you were interested in it, I would definitely give it a try. And my very last special edition, I'm actually kind of bummed because I just realized it's a little damaged, but that's okay. We're not going to cry about it. And that is, of course, my special edition of Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alice Oseman. Fairy Loot has been doing these special editions for the last couple of months. I'm still waiting on the other two that are currently out, but I absolutely love these. These are hardcover. They are sprayed on the edges. They are signed by Alice Oseman, which I just can't get enough of. What the heck? Um, and then they have really gorgeous uh, end papers, and then they have some embossing on the front covers, which I think are... Uh, it just... It makes my soul happy. Thank you very much. Uh, I needed this in my life, and I'm so glad that I have this. I actually just opened this today, and 
it was the highlight of everything I needed and more. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Alice Oseman. Thank you, Fairy Loot. It was Fairy Loot, right? I could just be sounding stupid right now. Yes, <laughs> but I'm very excited to have this. <sighs> okay, moving on to the second uh, stack of books here. The first one being the one that was sent to me uh, to review, and that is When the Time Comes. This is by Amani Hayes. Uh, this is a self-published sci-fi book um, that deals with dreams, and um, it's a YA book, YA sci-fi. Uh, dreams, a portal, I don't really know too much more about that. I read the synopsis when he offered to send it to me, and I was very intrigued to give it a try. I love supporting self-published authors, so why not give it a go? And it's relatively short, so hopefully I enjoy it. I'm excited to give it a go. I love the font in here. Something about this makes me happy. <laughs> Up next we have Promises and Pomegranates. I don't know why I was having, having such a hard time saying that freaking title, but this is by Sav R. Miller. This is a dark romance. I don't actually know if it is a paranormal romance or not, but I know it's a Hades of Persephone retelling, which has been so, so popular recently that I don't know if I'm burnt out on it or I need to read more of it and can never stop. I'm not really sure where I lie on that spectrum, but I'm very excited to give this one a go. I've heard really good things about this one. Um, I don't know really the, in the intention behind it, but Hades of Persephone, it's a pretty well-known uh, Greek, you know, story, so I'm excited to see what the author does with it. All right, up next we have another retelling, and that is The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. This is actually a dark Peter Pan retelling, which is another one that I'm very excited to get to. It says, the stories were all wrong. Hook was never the villain. Um, so it's a, I think, a romance between Hook and Wendy. So, I don't know. That sounds pretty good to me. And it's short. I've heard good things. I'm excited to get to it. The next few books I bought because I wanted physical copies for my TBR this month. The first one being Tea Dragon Festival by Kay O'Neill. This is one that I'm so excited to have in hardcover. I'm really sad because you can't buy the original first book in the series in hardcover. I don't know why, but I'm very excited to have the big, like, big one because my other one is quite small. I got the paperback and it's like small and puny. Um, so I'm really excited to have the second book in hardcover. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I'm so obsessed with this. This is a graphic novel about um, tea dragons and um, it's very diverse. It's very inclusive. I love it. The art style in here is absolutely stunning. And the tea dragons are legitimately the cutest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, ugh, stop it. Hold on. I just want to show you the cute little tea dragons because they are absolutely the cutest thing to ever grace the earth. Look at those tea dragons. Stop it. They're so cute. Uh, anyways, I'm really excited to get around to book two. I have not read this one yet, but it is next high on my priority list to like read next. Uh, finally getting out of my slump. So hopefully I can get to this and love it. Then we have The Play by L. Kennedy. Again, another book that was on my TBR this month. This is the third book in the Briar U series by L. Kennedy. This is a series that kind of comes after the off-campus series, although you can read them out of order. All of them are technically standalones. They just, you know, follow the same type of core people in the school. Um, and I really enjoyed this one. This one followed Demi and Hunter. Hunter is known for being a playboy. However, in his last season of hockey, um, he slept with somebody that ended up causing issues on the ice and they lost their game. And now that he's the new captain, he doesn't want sex getting in the way of his goals to be a great captain and to win this season. Um, however, enter Demi, who is a partner, somebody that he's partnered up with in one of his classes. It's a psych class. And, um, they are really cool just being friends. She has a boyfriend at the beginning of the story and, you know, things are great. Hunky dory. They are great friends. They have wonderful chemistry. Um, but then things turn into a little bit more when she is now newly single and ready to rebound. So, uh, I really enjoyed this one. I really like Elle Kennedy's writing. Something about the way that she puts characters together and writes chemistry and relationships is just so well done but also she really includes some darker topics in almost all of her books that kind of touch on things that i love to read about so i really enjoyed this one i gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars a uh, little spoiler for my um my wrap up this month but i love this series and i highly highly recommend that you give it a try i personally think that the off-campus series is better than this one but i do like all of these a lot up next i bought long shot this is by kennedy ryan this is a author that i have heard nothing but good things about and have had so many people recommend me kennedy ryan so i definitely wanted to pick up one of their books and give them a try uh this is a forbidden love set in an explosive world of the nba uh, think you know what it's like being a baller's girl? You don't. My fairy tale is upside down. My happily never after. I kiss the prince and he turned into a fraud. I was a fool and his love fools gold. Now there's a new player in the game, August West. One of NBA's brightest stars. Fine, forbidden. He wants me, I want him. By a past, my fraudulent prince won't let me go. Ooh, that sounds so good. I'm very excited to give it a go. As you know, I love sports romance, so hopefully I love this one. Speaking of sports romance, I cannot remember if I hauled this or not, so if I have already hauled this, my bad, but... 
I'm gonna do it again just in case. And that is Colty by Mariana Zapata, another one that was on my TBR this month and I really enjoyed. This is a sports romance between, what is her name? Sal and um, Reiner Colty, who was a very well-known, very big soccer player uh, when Sal was growing up. And now that Sal's at, I don't know if she's in college. I think this is just like, um, it is a, it's a professional team, but it's like a lower professional team. Um, she is playing on that team and Sal ends up being coached by Reiner Colty. It's a very slow burn. It's a very fantastic romance um, between the two of them. It's really a friendship that turns into a romance, but Sal is a very snarky, witty character, and Reiner Colty is a big grump, and it's just so fun to see their dynamic work, work out together. I really enjoyed this one. If you like a good slow burn sports romance, I think you'll really enjoy this one. Up next, I finally got myself a copy of The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. This is one that I've wanted for so long. I missed out on the Illumicrate Special Edition, which forever haunts me in my soul because those sprayed edges were absolutely stunning, but since I wasn't able to get a copy of the Illumicrate one, I decided to get myself a copy of the original one. I was never able to get a chance to read it before it got traditionally published, so I'm excited to give it a go. Um, I've heard really mixed reviews. Some people love it, some people hate it. I don't really know what the synopsis is. I know that everyone is talking about it, and I wanted to read it. Secrets, Betrayal, Seduction, Power, Welcome to the Alexandrian Society. So I'm excited to give this one a go. Let me know if you read it. I would love to hear your thoughts. Then we have The Hookup Dilemma by Constance Gillum. I don't know why I picked this up. I saw it at Target one day, and I was like, yeah, I need that. Uh, I saw a black woman on the cover. I saw a romance. Ah, I was like, yeah, sign me up. Um, I believe maybe fake dating. I honestly don't know. I'm going to read it at some point and hopefully I enjoy it. And the last one that I purchased for myself is Electric Idol by Katie Robert. Um, I did have this on my TBR this month as well. And I'm really excited for it. This one is a Eros and Psyche. I couldn't remember her name. Eros and Psyche retelling. This is the second book in the Dark Olympus series. The first one being Neon Gods following Hades and Persephone. Again, that trope is coming back. But uh, this one is following Persephone's sister, um, Psyche. And it's an arranged marriage between her and Eros after Eros is forced to um, put a hit on uh, Psyche and he's the one supposed to kill her. But he can't, so he marries her instead. And it's the falling out of that. Really enjoy uh, Katie Roberts writing. I've read a lot of her work and so this is one that I'm super excited for. Okay, we're officially moving into the Owl Crate portion of this, so if you are not interested in seeing the unboxings of these, then you are more than welcome to leave us, but I do want to share these. If I'm being totally transparent, two of these I have opened already and looked at them. I got them months ago <laughs> and was not in a filming mood, so I wanted to still show everything to you, but I did already open this one. This is the March box for Owl Crate Jr. Um, the first thing that we have in here is a little play foam pal. Uh, a lot of this stuff I give to my siblings. They really enjoy it. Um, we also have a pin. This pin slightly makes me mad because on the spoiler called card, it, it's just called like a friendship pin, but this is actually a pin that depicts the characters from Adventure Time, and I loathe that show. Like, loathe it. My husband loves that show, and he was watching it a few months ago, and every time I think of it, I want to, like, strangle somebody. So, uh, I will definitely be giving this one away. In this little envelope, I believe, uh, it came with these two magnets, which are very cute. One of them says, uh, friendship rule number one, don't keep secrets, and rule of friendship number 24, never spoil the end of a movie. So, uh, again, I will be giving these to my siblings. Uh, this is all out of order, so I apologize, but the theme for next month, we're, which we're about to open, is Twisted Tales, which I'm excited to see what the book is in that. We also have the collector's card that they have been doing for this month. So this is number three, Max and Josie, which is super cute, and they do have some, like, information on the back of them. Can't remember if this came in this box or the other box. I opened them sim simultaneously, so my bad, but this is a little thing of post-it notes with the owl crate symbols on the side. And then in this little envelope, you have postcards, which are very cute. I don't usually use postcards, but every time I get them in book boxes, I think like maybe I should just send out a postcard and just like be one of those like weird people that writes letters to people. I never been that person before I could start. <laughs> and then here we have a uh, scratch paper stickers. Um, my sister loves these. So as much as I want to keep them and do it for myself, I'll probably give them to her, even though I want to be selfish and keep it for myself. Maybe I'll just do one. <laughs> and lastly, in that Owl Crate Junior box is the book. And the book is by Margaret Peterson Haddix, The School for Whatnots. Um, never heard of this one. I have another one of her books on my shelves. Have not gotten around to anything written by her yet. This is the uh, note from the author. Um, it says, no matter what anyone else tells you, I'm real. That's what the note says that Max finds under her keyboard. He knows that his best friend Josie wrote it. Uh, he knows her handwriting anywhere, but why she wrote it and what it means remains a mystery. Ever since they met in kindergarten, Max and Josie have been inseparable until the summer after fifth grade when Josie disappeared, leaving only a note and a whisper 
and a whispering something about what not rules. But why would Max ever think that Josie wasn't real? And what are what nots? As Max sets out to uncover what happened to Josie and what she is or isn't, little does he know that she's fighting to find him again too. But there are forces trying to keep Max and Josie from ever seeing each other again because Josie wasn't supposed to be real. Master of suspense and middle grade thrillers, uh, Margaret Patterson Haddix delivers another pace turning standalone adventure that delves into the power of privilege, the question of humanity, and the importance of true friendship. This sounds amazing. I need to be reading a lot more middle grade, and this is one that I will definitely can pick up like ASAP. Bear with me, I'm not going to go through the spoiler cards for all of this. Um, if you want to know, feel free to ask me. I keep the spoiler cards for all of my stuff, so uh, if you would like to know where it's from, ask me. <laughs> okay, moving on to April's box, and that is Twisted Tales. Um, the first thing I see in here, the worms, they get me every time. They make me mad. They really do. I believe this is a tote bag. Yes, it is. Very cute tote bag, by the way. Love that. This says, fairy tales are more than true. Not because they tell us that dragons exist, but because they tell us that dragons can be beaten. Neil Gaiman. Love that. I love that. Thank you, Neil Gaiman, for giving us such a wonderful quote. All right. Then next up we have berry scented, berry candy scented, Double-ended highlighters. Oh, that is the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm, supposed to, I'm, I'm sure I'm not supposed to cuss when I'm opening Owl Crate Junior boxes. But, but, oh my gosh, this is so cute. There are six of them in there. Only looks like four, but maybe they're... Oh no, it's six plus. It's for six... I swear, I'm okay. It's for six and older. And there's four um, candy-scented things in here. And they're chisel point and non-toxic. We love that for them. <laughs> Okay, and then we have a little, um, no, mm -mm. I thought this was a notebook, and it's the actual book, and it makes me mad. <laughs> okay, so, uh, we have Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, um, by Lewis Carroll. I have never, uh, opened up a box and immediately thought, oh, I'm gonna unhaul this, but I don't like this book, so I'm actually gonna give this to my siblings, because I think that they would really, really enjoy this. Um, hopefully they'll enjoy it a lot more than I did. This is a book that just doesn't make sense to me, but I love that they're including classics in young children book boxes because it's cool to have that and have the opportunity for them to read something like this so my siblings will enjoy this oh stop it we have twisted tales puffy stickers oh my god puffy stickers are the best this just makes me happy this makes my day this is something that i needed thank you alcra jr we have a wooden bookmark if you don't trouble trouble then trouble won't trouble you love that the jumpies uh by tracy baptist so that is super cute the theme for next month is School of Wonders. Um, that is very cute. We have the collector's card here. The Fable and Moth. Very cute. I like how Fable doesn't have a face. That is very cute. Um, and the book this month is The Mirror Wood by Diva Fagan. Uh, I'm, I was wearing my sister's face on the night the hunters came to our cottage. Hmm, interesting. And it is signed. Uh, not, no book plate this time. Actually signed. Appearances are always deceiving. Fable has been cursed by a twisted magic that villagers call the blight, which forces her to steal and wear the faces of others or risk oblivion. To find her true self, she'll have to enter the treacherous mirror wood and free it from the demon prince who has ruled it for centuries. Thankfully, she has her faithful and opinionated feline companion, Moth, by her side. Pursued by my Korax, a fierce apprentice life hunter who is determined to destroy her, Fable plunges through the thorny forest into a wood that is trapped in time and rife with peril. Jesus Christ, that was hard. <laughs> there she encounters a boister boisterously chatty skull, a library full of flying books, and a beast so powerful it tears all at the fabric of reality, leaving nothing in its wake. Fable will soon discover that in the mirror wood, nothing is quite like the stories say. Oh my gosh, that sounds so cute. I love middle grade. Why don't I read it more? Oh, this sounds perfect. Cannot wait to get to this. Okay, we're moving on to actual Owlcrate this time, not Owlcrate Jr. Uh, the first thing I have actually is um, a really cute thing that Al Quint sent me. Um, it was like a anniversary, year anniversary thank you for being with them for a full year. And they sent me this little post-it or card or picture, whatever you want to call it, of all 12 books that were in last year's boxes. So this is super cool. It says, thank you. Al Quint is celebrating our seventh anniversary and we want to thank you for being a part of our adventure. That's super cute. And I love this. Okay. This again, is out of order. Uh, we have the little, um, what's it called? Fairy loot. No, no, no. I'll create thing where they show you the difference between the book. Um, the theme for the next box is Peek Behind the Curtain. We have a letter from the author. I believe that's the actual book right there. This is the spoiler card. Uh, the first thing that we have here is an embroidery kit, which I, I love that. 
I love that they took the extra mile, went the extra mile and gave us an embroidery kit. Like, yes, thank you. I needed that in my life. Um, that is what the design looks like. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. My, my light is probably washing it out. It's like a, oh, it's because it's backwards. <laughs> it's like a mountain scene. It's really cute. Uh, it came, it came with a lot of like really cool colors as well. So I'm excited to give embroidery a go. Uh, I, it's never something that I've necessarily been interested in as a hobby, but who knows, maybe I'll fall in love with it and need to embroider all things. And it's funny because Kayla recently just did one where she did like em embroidery and cross stitch on her channel and I loved it. And I was like, maybe I'll like that. And then it showed up in a box. So there you go. <laughs> uh, then we got some stickers. Uh, these are absolutely extremely incredibly so cute and I love them. Uh, each of them have different quotes. I'm not gonna read them, but if you wanna look at them, there they are. Then we have the next collectible luggage pin. Um, this one is inspired by Sorcery of Thorns. We're at three of 12, so there's gonna be a lot more of these in their boxes, which is cool. We also have some tea, Dorian Gray tea, which is of course inspired by a picture of Dorian Gray. Then we have another book sleeve. Gotta love a good book sleeve. This is Hope Makes Its Own Magic. And the back, oh, I'm obsessed with this. It's so gorgeous. Then we have a um, print holder thing, which is actually great because I get a lot of prints and I never know where to put them. And I'm very excited to use this because I can finally put my print somewhere. This makes me happy. And then of course, at last we have the book, which is a forgery of roses. Um, a portrait is worth a thousand lives by Jessica S. Olson. This is what the sprayed edges look like. Um, this one is, of course, signed. This one does have some really pretty uh, under the dish jacket art as well. We have some embossing as well as on the back. There's one little flower rose thing. And then this is what the under the cover dust jacket art looks like. It's stunning. The one thing I can't remember is I actually like the original cover better. Sorry, Alfred, but it's the truth. Um, yeah, that is what the... Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's what the original cover looks like. And this is the new cover. I don't know, something about this cover just gives me all the vibes. But I am so excited to have it. It says, Myra Whitlock has a gift one many would kill for. She's an artist whose portraits alter people's real life bodies. A talent she must hide from those who would kidnap, blackmail, or worse, in order to control it. Guarding this secret is the only way to keep her younger sister safe and now that her parents are gone. But one frigid night, the governor's wife discovers the truth and threatens to expose Myra if she does not complete a special portrait that would resurrect the governor's dead son. Desperate, Myra ventures into the legendary stone mansion. Once she arrives, however, it becomes clear that the boy's death was no accident. Someone dangerous lurks within these glittering walls, someone harboring a disturbing obsession with a magical portrait. Myra cannot do the por portrait until she knows what really happened, so she turns to the governor's oldest son, a captivating redhead poet. Together, they delve into a fa the family's most shattered affairs, racing to uncover the truth before the secret Myra spent her life concealing makes her the killer's next victim. That sounds amazing. I'm really excited for this. Uh, okay, quickly, the art print is inspired by an enchantment of ravens. The book sleeve ins is inspired by Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Uh, the Night Court Embroidered Kit is inspired by A Court of Thorns and Roses. The sticker sheet is inspired by Isabel Ibanez. Um, oh, it was designed, created by Isabel Ibanez and desired by Wintersong, King, The Kingdom of Back, Woven in Moonlight, and Henry Mastis. Um, Fiction and Bathco did the Dorian Gray face mask. Oh, it's a face mask. I thought it was tea. Sorry, it's a face mask. And the luggage inspired by Sorcery Forms. So there we go. Last box and then we're done. Thank the Lord. There we go. <gasps> There's no worms in this one. It makes me happy. All right, behind the curtain. This is what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Wow. What is this? Oh, this is coffee. Bones Coffee Company, the Angel of Music, Chocolate Eclair, um, Medium Roast Coffee. That's really cool. Look at the, the freaking art on that. I love that. The only problem is I don't have any form of drinking this coffee, which is sad. Maybe I'll buy a French press just so I can drink this. <laughs> okay, then we have this. It says, The Conquering Circus presents where the story, where the stage tells the story and the legends are born. Glorian. And this is inspired by uh, Weird Dreams Descent by Janelle Angelis. I love that. I don't actually know what it is. I think it maybe holds a plant. But it's cute! <laughs> uh, for finding dreams that don't exist yet. Love that. Oh, stop it. What is on it though? Moon, a heart with a key, and a fox. It is a wax press. I know it's kind of hard to see with my light, but it also comes with some wax. That my hands down be the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. I love it. I actually have a um, wax press that I used for my wedding, so I'm very familiar with those. All right, we have another of the luggage pins. 
This one says the Cirque de Rêve. This is inspired by the Night Circus, so. Cute. I do love the Night Circus, one of my favorite books. Maybe another puzzle, what do we have? The Circus Arrives Without Warning, also inspired by um, the Night Circus. Come visit the wondrous Cirque, the Cirque de Rêve. We want to help you add a bit of dreaminess to your decor with this clock inspired by the stock. If you've read the Night Circus, that was a weird sound. If you've read the, the Night Circus, you know how important clocks are to the story. So this makes me happy. Thank you very much. It does. Give it to me. Oh, I love it. It's so cute. Oh, it's stunning. Wow, that's a really cool thing to have. I'm gonna put it right there. Wait, stop it. I've been needing a freaking mouse pad. This is perfect. Okay, I don't know what this is inspired by. Outside, things may be tragic. But in here, we feel it's magic. All right then. Don't know what it's inspired by, but I like it. And I needed it, so it's perfect. Wee! My leg is falling asleep. <sighs> okay, the theme for next month in May is The Chosen Ones. We have a note from the author, which is the cover of the book, and the book is Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. I have heard of this one. I believe it's a hotel that kind of pops up out of nowhere. Um, kind of gives me that circus vibe, so I get it. Wow. 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 Stunning. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. Holy, I was not expecting all of this. Uh, wow. Okay. Um, oh, okay. This says, greeting travelers. Farewell, travelers. Wow. That's nice. And then we have some really, really pretty under the dish art as well. That's stunning. I'm a fan. This should also be signed. It is indeed signed. And let me figure out what the hell this is about. Because I think I've heard about it, but I could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. It won't be the last time. All right. All her life, Johnny has dreamed of elsewhere. Barely scraping by with a job at a tannery, she resigns to a dreamy life in the port town of Dirk, caring for her younger sister, Z Z Zosa, that is, until a legendary Hotel Magnifique appeared in town. Hotel Magnifique is famous for its astonishing stat uh, enchantments, uh, especially its ability to travel the world. Arriving at the new destination each midnight, Johnny and Z Zosa see their chance to join the hotel's staff. They're soon swept into a world of sparkling chandeliers and impossible magic, but it's not long before Johnny discovers that beneath the marvelous glamour, the hotel is hiding dangerous secrets. With a vexing, handsome doorman, Belle, and her only ally, Jenny embarks on a mission to unravel the mystery of the magic at the heart of the hotel and free Zosa and the other staff from the cruelty and ruthless maitre d', Ma maitre d' hotel. To succeed, she'll have to risk everything she loves, but failure would mean a fate far worse than returning home. Whoa, that sounds good. If this gives me at all night circus vibes, I'm in. Thank you very much. Very quickly, I'm gonna go through this spoiler card. The wax seal is inspired by Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. The coffee is of course inspired by Phantom of the Opera. The clock is inspired by the night circus. The silicone popcorn holder, not what I was expecting. It does have uh, directions, I found this at the bottom of the box, but uh, it is a popcorn holder. That's pretty cool. I was not expecting that. It is inspired by Where Dreams Ascend. Um, the mouse pad is inspired by Moulin Rouge. The luggage pin is inspired by The Night Circus. And that is it. And then the cover of the book, the changes that were made. Let's take a look. So it used to be like a purpley color and now it is blue. There you go. I'm done. Oh, I've been filming for a long time and I, I'm ready to not be filming anymore. All right, this is it. All, these are all of the books that I bought into my home. Uh, you know, seeing as it's been like a month and a half, I'm not, I'm not, you know, too upset, upset about it, but a lot of these are special editions, so you know what, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it, not too bad. <laughs> Let me know what you have purchased recently and what books that you're really excited for. If you've read any of these or you have any thoughts on them, feel free to let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you made it to the end of this video, leave a book stack emoji. But that is the end. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Thank you so much for supporting me in this time uh, that I have been off. I love you all very much. I will see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And of course, leave any comments, questions, and suggestions in the comment section below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.